Okay, so let's take a look at adding a motor group here. So we have uh, we have our um, uh, Clawbot build uh, there in the video. Um, we are um, we've saved a, a blocks project. We've you know created a new blocks project. We've named it motor motor group and saved it. We're downloading into slot one. We have a controller that's been wirelessly connected to the brain. We then connected the controller with a USB-C cable to the computer. So we're downloading the code to the controller, which is then sending to the brain wirelessly. Um, and we have our Python code here, so we can take a look at, uh, at, at uh, what's happening as we use our blocks with the, uh, with, you know, with the intention that we are going to be moving over to Python uh, in the future. Okay, so uh, so basically what we're going to do here is whenever we're adding hardware onto the robot, notice there's no hardware definitions inside of the Python code here. So so basically we're going to go in. Uh, I already had one earlier. So let's go ahead and add device, uh, and we're going to go ahead and add motor group. Um, and basically what I'm going to do here is I'm adding a motor group on the back of the, you know, like a drivetrain. So I'm going to be doing some to, some demonstrations that basically hey, a motor group is not a drivetrain. Okay, and I'm going to highlight some of those things. So motor group is basically two motors that are acting as one motor. That's basically it. You know, if you wanted to put on two sides of something to, to, to provide more torque, uh, or in this case, you know, to drive a, 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 a robot forward. Okay, but here we have it. In, uh, there are two motors in 6 and 10. Notice that we have some options here. Okay, if you take your thumbs and you hold them up, you know, if you extend your thumbs, uh, out <laughs> like this uh, and then you take your thumbs and you turn them one way and then the other right so if we go uh, basically what is going to happen here if we if we put two motors going forward the right motor is going to go like this and the left motor is going to go like this okay and so basically um, this this problem is uh, is basically that one motor has to be reversed Okay, that's that's basically what it is. So if you if you have two motors that are going the same direction, one is going to go be going backwards, and one is going to be going forwards. Okay, so by reversing a motor, they'll both move forwards when you when you tell the motor group to move forward. So let's let's see this in action. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, and uh, have. Uh, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and click done. So right now the motor group both are spinning forward. So let's go ahead and just spin the motor group forward now, uh, and we're going to spin it for uh, whoop, uh, wait for uh, let's say uh, two seconds, and then we're going to stop the motor group. Okay, so we're going to stop the motor group. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to go download uh, to the robot. All right, and let's go ahead and click Run. And so notice that the motors are spinning in the opposite directions because they've been turned opposite each other. So in order to counteract this, let's go back into Motor Group 6, and we're just going to go ahead and reverse Motor 10. So that's the motor on the right there. And we're going to reverse it. We're going to click Done. Okay, we're going to download the code again. Let's hope this works. It, it may move forward, it may move backwards, I have to be honest with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and click Run. Okay, so now we have one motor that is uh, going forward, one motor is going backwards, but because of the physical orientation of them, it, they're now propelling a robot in a forward direction when it's forward. So, so basically, if you're using this as a drivetrain, you, you need to reverse one of the motors, basically. Uh, okay, so that is, that is, that is the first uh, part of this motor group. Um, now, the motor group uh, does not relate to the inertial sensor, okay? So when, uh, so when it says move forward 90 degrees, uh, we're not talking about moving the entire robot forward, right? What we're talking about is we're, move, we're talking about rotating the shaft of the motor 90 degrees. So, so notice that we say spin motor group 6 90 degrees. The whole robot is not going to turn. Let's go ahead and download and run this. So if these, uh, if these uh, you know, if you have wheels on your robot that are a certain circumference, this would basically rotate a quarter turn, and the robot would move forward one quarter of the circumference of the wheel. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so 90 degrees is just that much. Uh, if we say, we say that we want to uh, uh, go the entire circumference, we go 360 degrees. 
Uh, and this is useful for a couple of reasons. So basically these motors are acting as a servo. So a motor, it, we tend to think of motors as running with kind of continuous forward or back motion. Uh, a stepper motor can move to a, you know, move a particular increment forward or backwards. And then a servo we think of as moving to a position. Okay, so we think of a servo as saying, hey, if a servo, you know, moved to position 180, you know, it'll spin, you know, uh, the opposite direction, right? Or 360, it'll spin all the way around. Or 720, it'll spin three, you know, two times around uh, to a fixed position as fast as possible. So, so here we have, so in this case, this motor group, we can have it, you know, we can say, like we did in the first example, we can say move it forward for a number of seconds and it will move forward for a number of seconds. So in this case, we're using what's called a shaft encoder and we're basically just spinning the, the shaft itself for a certain number of degrees. Okay, so in this case, 360, it will go, the wheels will go all the way around one time. Okay, so they spin one time, great. All right, let's say that we want it to move back. Okay, we can go reverse or we can leave it forward and we can put negative 360, okay? Now, why would you want to do this? <laughs> why on earth? So, so sometimes it's just easier to feed in a number than it is to change the actual, uh, the actual um, uh, uh, code here. So let's say you had this in a loop uh, and you just want to change the number. That might be a case where you wanted it to go negative 360, uh, you know, not 360. So let's, let's, let's see that happen here just to be sure. Um, okay, let me go ahead and click run. Okay, and it runs, net, you know, it goes forward negative 360, which is the equivalent of reverse 360. Okay, um, the next thing it can do is that, uh, let's, uh, the next thing we, we can have it do is basically we can turn it to position. Okay, so in the case of position, it's basically going to turn to a specific number of degrees. So let's say that that number of degrees, um, uh, let's say that position is um, 90. Now this is going to look uh, really the same uh, because of the fact that it's, uh, this would look very similar because of the fact that it, uh, it is a rolling robot, so it's just going to move forward 90 degrees. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. So let's go, let's say that we move it, um, how can we demonstrate this? So we can demonstrate, we can move it to position 180, and then we'd move it to position, let's say we want to spin to position 90, and then we want to spin it back to position 180. So this would be an example of, say, the claw or the arm that you see uh, at the top. Now, now, because there aren't two motors on this robot here, uh, basically it's not a good demonstration. But notice that in this case, we're moving it to position 180, so it's going to go forward as fast as possible to position 180, uh, it starts uh, at zero. So at the beginning of the, um, at the, beginning of the uh, program, it resets to zero. It'll, it'll move 100, you know, to position 180, then to position 90, then back to position 180. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And this would be very useful, for example, on any kind of controlled motion. So for example, on their arm, if you want to set it, say you want to raise it, you know, to a particular position, you can test out, you know, how many degrees it is. Uh, to that partic particular position, uh, and then um, and then you know accurately get it there. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so we see so you see that we went forward, backwards, forwards, and we stopped at 180 degrees. So many of these commands are are a lot like the motor. So take a look at the motor video uh, to look at some more options as far as uh, braking um, and uh, looking at more into this position 90 degrees. Um, the primary thing here that you need to understand about motor groups uh, is this idea of reversing it, right? So if you have two motors, you have to you have to think about the physical orientation of them and then reverse one one of the motors uh, so that it uh, it goes in the same direction as the other motor. Okay, so those are motor groups. Uh, best of luck.